Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome. In this video, I want to show you how to install the new exciting Kali Purple in VirtualBox. But before I do that, go ahead and just smash that subscribe button and then let's get right into it. So the first thing we need is to download the VirtualBox. Go ahead and go to virtualbox.org or simply Google VirtualBox. Then once you're on this page, click on downloads. That will take you to the download to the downloads page. And once you're here, click on Windows. If you are using a Windows computer or click on a Mac. In my case, I'm using a Mac machine, so I'll click on Mac. And then it's gonna take about you know a few seconds to just download the VirtualBox. Once the download is finished, you will have to double click on the file. So I'm gonna double click on this one. And then it's gonna take me into the whole process of installing VirtualBox. So I'm on the Mac. Again, the steps on Windows are similar, but it might look a little bit different. So what I will do is to double click on this uh, PKG file, and then the installation process, it's gonna kick in. I click on continue, then I click on install, and ask me to type in my password. I'm gonna go ahead and just provide them with that. Click on install or hit enter, in my case, on, on, on the keyboard. And then it's basically installing VirtualBox. It's going to take a few seconds. It's not a very uh, big program. There we go. There we go. The download is finished. So I click on close. You can ask me to move this to trash. I'll say yes, move to trash. Got to love Mac. Um, and now VirtualBox is finished, in, you know, installing. So let me search for it. I'm going to go to Spotlight here, then just search for VirtualBox. I'm going to click on the first thing that comes up. Just want to open VirtualBox so you'll see it. And here is VirtualBox. Here is VirtualBox. Now, once you finish installing VirtualBox, go ahead and go to Kali.org. Kali.org or simply Google Kali.org. Then once you're on their website, go ahead and click on Get Kali. And now let's download the Kali Purple. So here is the, the thing. Normally, what we normally do when we're installing Kali is just grab the VM, right? Grab the virtual machine and then just proceed with the whole, like import you know, this VM into the, uh, in our case, into VirtualBox. But the thing that they did with Kali Purple, they didn't give us the pre-built VM which it would have made a lot of our life a lot easier. So they give us the regular images, ISO files. So I'm gonna click on installer images right here, click on that, and it's gonna sort of scroll down where you see the Kali 2023 version. You keep scrolling down a little bit more, then you'll see the Kali Purple. Right, this is what we need. Um, what you need to download is the Kali Purple. So you click on this little download icon right here. So you click on that. This is gonna take a minute because it's about 3.5 gig worth of a file. So what I did, I've already downloaded this. Uh, you can pause the video and then resume the video once your download's finished. So if I've already downloaded, if I go to my downloads folder, you see that I've already downloaded Kali. It's right here and the other one is downloading as well. So once you finish downloading Kali, go back to your VirtualBox or open up your VirtualBox again Make this a little bit bigger. Now, once you're here, let's go ahead and get into the installation process of Kali Purple. So right here, click on New. And they're gonna ask you, okay, you, you gotta give this thing a name. So I'm gonna let's just call this Kali uh, Purple. Let's call this Kali Purple. And then here uh, in where it says uh, the ISO. Uh, click on that or se select the little kind of a icon there, the little drop down icon, then click on other. Search into your folder, as you said. And then right here, let's go to the downloads because that's where we have our uh, Kali located, our ISO file located. And then select the ISO file that, uh, that we downloaded. Click on open. Bring that in. It's right there. So once you're bringing in the ISO image, they're going to pre-select the Linux and pre-select Ubuntu 64-bit because that's what 
uh, Kali Purple uses. Even the regular, the you know, regular Kali uses that as well. All right, we're gonna click next. All right, then right here, this is just two gig. Let's push this to four gig. All right, and then uh, for the process, so let's my has eight CPU. I'm gonna give this four because I want this to be faster. So let's go ahead and put that to four. All right, I'm gonna click on next. And for 25 gigs uh, of storage, this is the hard disk. 25 gig of storage, that looks good to me. You can, you know, push that to maybe 35 or 50. Let's say 55 in my case. And then I'm gonna click on next. Then just verify everything. This is the summary page. You're verifying everything and make sure the memory you've picked is the right, the processor is the right, and the hard drive. Once you finish with that, click on finish. Now, Kali Propo have been created a few things you can do you can right click on this go to settings and then change a few things one of the things that you can change is the network so i want my kali Propo to be able to go to the internet to be able to communicate with my home computer so i can click on the network section here the network tab and then where it says attach to uh select that then i can bridge the adapter once i bridge the adapter my Kali Propo, it's going to be connected to the same Wi-Fi that I have my laptop connected to, which is what I want, right? In in my case, this is not safe, <laughs> but uh, this is what we're doing for the sake of the lab. All right, click uh, OK. Then once we finish with that, um, double click on Kali Propo. All right, so once you finish double click on Kali Propo, this will come up. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you'll be able to see what we're doing. I'm going to uh, click in, in VirtualBox. You click on this little icon down here, then click on the virtual screen one. In my case, I'm going to just scale this up to 300. There's a better way of doing this, but for the sake of this, they just do that for now. And I will double click on this again to make a full screen. And here we are. So select the graphical install, then hit enter. And now it, it's going in, it's it's going into the whole installation process. It's trying to install this thing. If any pop-ups comes up, go ahead and just click the X icon. Just close those. All right, here they're asking us the language. So we will click on continue. Here they're asking us the country. Click on, just keep clicking on continue. American English, absolutely, continue. All right, now they're mounting the hard drive. I give it a minute. I'm obviously going to be skipping the, you know, through the videos uh, so that you won't see here looking at this thing loading. All right, now we are here on the configure the network. The host name, they say Kali. I'm going to leave that there. Click on continue. The domain name, we don't have it in domain name. Just click on continue. Now give this thing a full name. I'm going to just give it my full name. Francois B. Arthanas. Then click on, con click on continue. I'm going to say, okay, we're going to use this as your username. Francois, I say that's okay. Click on continue. Now they want you to create the password. So I'm going to just keep it simple. This is a virtual machine. All right, let's keep it simple and then click on continue. All right, asking for the uh, time, uh, let's go ahead and select Eastern. That's my time zone. You select whichever one you use, whichever one is your time zone. <laughs> now they're partitioning the disks. All right, right here, we want to select the guided the guided use entire disk. So make sure that's selected. Uh, then click on uh, continue. And then make sure that's also selected. They're basically, you know, picking your virtual box uh, hard disk, the one that we created earlier. Uh, click on continue. And you want them to put all the files into this. You say, absolutely, I want to do exactly just that. Click on continue. And right now, they're just basically uh, showing you all the partitions 
that they have right here. That there are going to be a primary partitions which happen to have this many gigabytes. Just make sure you know this finish partitioning it selected. Then write all the changes into the disk. Then you click on continue again. I can ask you, do you agree that we move forward with all this? Click yes, then write changes to disk. Basically, click on continue. So this process might take a minute. Now, to the power of editing, I will come back once this is finished. Now, on this page, this is where they want you to select the desktop environment that you're going to be using. Leave this to the Kali default, but if you want to be fancy, you can go with the, either one of these, the KDE or GNOME, and that's fine as well. So I'll leave this on default and then click on continue. Then they're going to keep moving forward with the installation process. Like I said, this is going to take a minute. Now that I'm saying this, it sounds like the, the, uh, the movie, uh, I'll be back. You know, the, all right, that's it. Okay, after waiting for some time, this will pop up asking you to install the Grub bootloader. Go ahead and say yes, if yes is not selected already, then click on continue. And then they're going to ask you, okay, do you want to install this where? The Grub bootloader where? Select the hard disk, the same one that we created, then click on continue. And it's going to go ahead and start installing uh, Grub bootloader as well all right it's finishing up the installation and uh, we should be finishing up in a few more minutes so i'll pause the video then i'll be back again once this one is finished all right the page you've been waiting for now the installation is fully finished right here it says uh, finish the installation so go ahead and click on continue And uh, it's going to reboot. The system is going to reboot. Then after the reboot, we should be able to have Kali Purple. Then we're going to sort of like a play around with it a little bit before I let you go. Okay, uh, Kali Linux just finished rebooting. Now, the, the next thing we need to do is to sign in. So I'm going to sign in as Francois. That's the username. And then uh, sign in with the password that I created when I was installing this. And uh, it should be able to log us in. It's coming. And here we are. Ooh, this looks neat. All right. I like it already. So this is Kali Linux. This is how you install Kali Linux. It's a distribution. I keep saying Kali Linux, but Kali Purple, right? It's a distribution that is designed for the blue teamer, right? It's actually a mix of a blue teamer and red because it's a purple teaming. So, but there's, they have a lot of the blue teaming tools. So as you can see, they have identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. This is based on the NIST uh, framework, which is, is literally designed to help you defend the networks. And they have a bunch of different tools uh, for blue teaming as well. Now they didn't really remove all the ethical hacking tools. They are still here. That's the beauty of this one. Uh, and you should still have access to all of those tools as well so go ahead and play around with this um as you wish let me for example let me open up uh, uh the terminal here and let's see how the terminal looks like there we go look at that it looks pretty neat let's go ahead and just ping google dns 8.8.8.8 looks like we're getting on the internet just fine i'm gonna control c here to stop this and let's open up Firefox. Let's see if we're able to go to Google. Uh, just verifying this. Uh, Google.com. And we're, we're able to go to Google. So it looks like everything is working fine. Again, this is designed for the defender uh, to sort of help you defend networks. Uh, it's exciting. A lot of people are excited about it. I am excited about it. I can't wait to use it and they play around with it a little bit more then hopefully in the future i will make a video all about the different tools that come with this one as well and i'm looking forward to use this as i'm teaching security plus uh you know part of the hands-on portion of security plus all right that's all for now i will see you all in the next video but again remember if you haven't smashed that subscribe button go ahead and just smash that subscribe button again and i'll see you in the next video bye for now